Good afternoon. Yeah. It's my pleasure and honor to be here today to, to speak to you in this uh, forum. Uh, my topic is uh, essentially how we build a, a capable organization. Um, when you talk about capable organization, there are uh, many things, of course. I'm, I'm particularly focusing on the how do you create a, or build a culture of continuous improvement <coughs> driven by the total employee involvement. I'm going to speak only about our own experience because I was uh, part of as uh, <coughs> Mr. Grow uh, you know, introduced. I was a part of Sundaram Clayton, most part of my career. Uh, 27 years I worked in TDS. Uh, during the, the, the the time when the TQM came to India, and uh, uh, you might know Sundar Clayton was the first company in India to win the Deming Prize, uh, later the Pan Quality Medal. So I was a part of the team uh, in Sundar Clayton at the time. <coughs> so we learned many things from many Japanese sensei, Professor Suda, Vashio, earlier uh, uh, Professor Kurahara. Also, our Deming audit was done by. Uh, Ocean Gandhi, the person was written the question of Ocean Gandhi, <coughs> Yoji Akaf, Professor Yoji Akaf. Also, the Japan Quality Medal was at the time audited by Professor Itoshi Kume. So, basically, we had an excellent experience of learning from some of the global senseis. And uh, also, this uh, the whole concepts for India was developed more by Sundar model of the Kyan. <coughs> Not so much as a Japanese uh, model, we, we definitely took a lot of inputs. I myself visited at least two, three times to Japan to learn the 90s, some of these practices. But the key aspect uh, which I think you should uh, understand is we have to keep on uh, reinvent, reinvent, reinvent. It's not that what we started practicing in the 90s when we got the Deming Prize is what we are practicing today. We have a lot of changes in the environment. Um, the people, everything is changing, the dynamics are changing, so we keep uh, improving every aspect of uh, uh, the, the TQM or employee environment practices itself. And during the course of the uh, last uh, 15 years, I also then moved to a, a global uh, company. So, Sunan Great and Breaks Division was actually acquired, or uh, the, majority, the majority stake was taken by VAPCO, because VAPCO itself was anyway a part of. Uh, in the Sunam Clayton giant venture. Clayton is a Labco branch. So they took the majority stake. So again, uh, we started actually taking this to a global company. How do we practice TGM or uh, all these employee engagement practices to a global company? Now, uh, again, once again, uh, from an American stock listed company, we have moved to a, a German group. Zerab group. So, how do we practice? So, uh, some amount of uh, uh, improvement in the whole process uh, to adapt to those. Uh, so, the adapting to this new changing situation also is a key part of uh, our evolution, our transition, our learning also. So, the topic today uh, I see uh, strategy to action. Uh, uh, essentially, how we build a business outcome from the strategy. So my uh, single communication here is our strategy was uh, of course build a, a capable an organization that continuously reinvents, improves, innovates, become a, a global uh, successful company at the global scene through these basic fundamentals. Uh, you know, we didn't change much of our basic DNA or basic value system that we created in, uh, in, in Sundaram Greater. But in terms of business outcome, uh, today our company, okay, one, one aspect, there are so many aspects you can, you can, you can review on the business side, but one thing that I would like to, one or two things, we hold more than, uh, probably we are a leading market player in India for more than 50 years, uh, holding probably uh, more than two thirds of uh, the market share uh, in our sp uh, our space. Another uh, indication you can look at is uh, 
we are, we are running a listed company, Swapco India Limited is a listed company, which is now set of Commercial Vehicle Control Systems Limited, that's a listed company. So our shares today are about 10,200 plus rupees. It's a 5 rupee share. In the last 15 years, we have actually uh, probably delivered more than 40 times uh, value to the investors. So these are some of the some of the outcome, business outcome that is driven by the fundamentals of uh, uh, TQM. Um, uh, so now I'll go to the. We always take this as a as a reference point of our discussion. We call it as a journey of excellence. <coughs> Started from the fundamental employee engagement. Now you see the, the foundation for this is the employee engagement. Uh, TV has long back realized that uh, uh, you know uh, the people in the shop floor don't use them only for the legs and hands and legs use their brain. So in the 80s we started with the concept of uh, uh, suggestion schemes, um, QC circles. In fact, my first engagement in TV is in 1983-84 period is to be a a QC circle member. Uh, it used to be called as a manager's QC circle. Um, in the, of course, we were uh, Mopat plant of Sunan Clayton at the time in Oso. Uh, we did the first uh, QC circle. So, uh, we at the time learned from some of the professors, from Indian professors from um, ISI, Indian Statistical Institute, Professor C.Y. Krishnamurthy and uh, Professor C.S.L.T. Uh, like, you know, we tried to learn from uh, uh, those professors and then uh, we started practicing that subsequently we reinforced with the Japanese learning and uh, um, today today we have about 72 QC circles all over our plant we are uh, uh, you know average we expect a team to do four projects again initially this thing started as a uh, just a part participation don't worry about the quality of those uh, uh, those outcome but uh, just participate help them understand problem solving, teach them and all those things. <clears throat> but today, uh, almost every year, we, we, we same case suggestion scheme, cross-functional team projects, supervisory improvement projects, task forces as things. It's essentially the, uh, the improvement uh, framework. On an average, we, would, we get about 40, 40 uh, national and state level awards today uh, by the teams. The teams go and compete in prize. Uh, we, we, we encourage them to do. So the quality, now what I'm thinking is the quality, quality of those uh, projects, not only quality of the projects, now we are also trying to make sure that they are accountable to what they, to what they, uh, what they say and that is also linked to the business outcome. Those teams have to do whatever they do, it's also related to what outcome that makes to the business. It is not something people sit, sit together and then talk uh, something. So fundamentally we also make sure that their, their energy, their, their focus is directed towards the business uh, uh, topics because every quarter we give a theme to them. One quarter may be inventory production, another quarter uh, could be productivity productivity improvement, another quarter target uh, quarter could be quality improvement. So you 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 channelize all the energy and the and the strength towards delivering certain business outcome. So here I will be talking only the first three topics. In the interest of time, I will be I will be actually uh, focusing only on the employee engagement part. Uh, daily and uh, policy management. To a large extent, daily I will focus. Policy, I will try to give you some some uh, message. If there is some time, I would also, also like to take some questions and then uh, uh, and, and then try to close. So the TVS actually uh, to make it simple and easy for people to understand. Uh, TQM is actually conceptualized more like a temple. Uh, the foundation for all the, uh, you know, the thing is the employees and of course a strong daily routine management system on which you build the whole uh, uh, TQM uh, framework. You can see Kaizen is one of that. This is, this is developed in the 90s. We don't much change it now. It is uh, still in our view. This framework still is uh, uh, relevant. Very important aspect of our uh, TQM is this, aspect, this one. This is essentially um, uh, of course, when we worked with Professor Suda, uh, this was a message uh, we, we understood and we are more or less this is ingrained into the system in our family today. Every employee, whether, whether it be a 
CEO, uh, a trainee who is joining to the company, they, all have, they have three roles to play. One is to retain what is given to them. Second is to improve. And third is to achieve, be a part of a breakthrough transformation that happens in the company. The, the degree of involvement changes for a CEO, uh, breakthrough is the key, fo key focus. Uh, maybe 70% of his time he has to spend on uh, uh, breakthroughs. CEOs means on the leadership team. For a, a trainee who joins the company, he, for him the critical aspect is uh, retain. retain, retainment. Retainment is essentially to, to, to rotate the PDC. Like for example, an operator in the company, he is supposed to receive a good part, produce a good part, deliver a good part. So at each tag, he has to make sure he, he, he maintains um, the uh, retains what, what is uh, given to them. Uh, and uh, of course, I have a few points uh, that I'll also share with you. Little more aspects there. Uh, so, as uh, share of the role of the people at the Gemba level is essentially retainment. It's not only for a shop floor, it is for a, every function. Every function. Improvement is, is uh, everything that you do because uh, this is what I said, uh, create a, a culture of continuous improvement. Everything that you do, you keep doing better and better. You don't stay at that where you are uh, or what was yesterday is not acceptable today. Today you have some improvement at least. My team, for example, will ask his people, what did you do better? What did you, do, what did you improve from last week to this week? This is a fundamental question. Because we have made sure this is a part of our uh, our, 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 our value system or our DNA, you are, you are uh, generally you don't get into a system somebody post challenges you and then say no, it's not my job, not, not in my in my job description. Which is the case in a global environment. Globally, you can't go and tell them you keep improving uh, because uh, I'm sure globally also there are companies which may be in the, the similar framework, but by and large, you need to uh, start at the beginning of your company or at, uh, at the early stage or, at, or even today if you are building a TQM organization. You need to make sure uh, this understanding is uh, getting into the system. Everybody has a stake in this. Everybody, of course you need to recognize, you need to pay a lot of whatever. But fundamentally this is the uh, something that we have over the, over the years we have built and that works. Um, I talked about uh, you know the employee engagement. Engagement level is different at different uh, for different people. Um, for example, the an operator in the software we expect him to see have the ability to see abnormality. If he's uh, typically in TPM, you know the Bugai. You know, Bugai is an abnormality. An ability to see abnormality is a fundamental requirement of an operator. Maybe abnormality maybe in quality, in the production the difference in productivity, or uh, uh, the housekeeping around. Because you can only improve what you can see. If you are not able to see an abnormality, you cannot improve. The, the, if you take a shop floor, uh, uh, you know, housekeeping or uh, the five years in the shop floor, uh, if you don't see it as a problem, you will never improve. So, so you need to have an ability to see the abnormality. To the extent you are able to see the abnormality, the system will improve. So that's why in, in, uh, in TPM we say Fugai or abnormality or micro abnormality. Keep seeing more and more. Uh, how much you are able to see that way the system will improve. That's at the level of the first level operator. But then if operators uh, operators have the ability, then uh, the people above should have much better ability because when, uh, when leaders when they go to software, if they are not able to see an abnormality, how will you, you know, advise or suggest improvement? Um, so, ability to improve is the next one. Okay, uh, abnormalities will bring you back to the where you were. Maybe if you are able to see something, micro level abnormality will, it will improve. Uh, but next level, if you look at a, a line leader, uh, we expect him to do uh, improve, improvement. Improvement in the area of production, productivity, quality. Past, delivery, everything, inclusive MS. How do they improve? You, you have to teach them. Uh, in Lean, uh, we teach people you know, uh, your uh, ability to prepare a values to mapping. You should be able to understand the current state and future state. 
and how to reach from the current state to the future state and repeatedly you do that uh, cycle. We expect at a level of blindness. You have a bottleneck cycle time, how do you, how do you address the bottleneck cycle time? How do you reduce the manual work content? All that, you know, the, of course we need to train them, start that on their own they will be able to do. You need to train them. <coughs> the third level is essentially solve problem, problems of you know, customer complaints or real issues or uh, supplier related topics, anything. Uh, problem solving. <coughs> of course, the little more complex problem then you go to the uh, next level uh, using a, uh, a cross functional team. This is slightly executive, largely executives. For the level up, you need a major transformation in the company, business transformation, or a organization transformation, take it as a six sigma type of project. So, this was, this is, but then you have a multiple uh, framework here, uh, certain tools are available here, and uh, but for that you need to build a, uh, a competent organization. It's not that it's whatever I am saying it is not easy to do. If you don't have a people who are not competent to handle that problem. As simple as the problem solving, you can't solve the problem. If it is not solved at the lower level, then it will only move on. But second, if they have to solve it, you need to build that uh, competency in them. Com uh, competence and capability is uh, very critical. Maybe, of course, Toyota has a concept of group or something. Uh, Continuously train people on the on certain basics, the shop floor, and uh, organizations have to find a way to like. You now, in our case, lean. There is a separate, uh, you know, training programs. Maybe six sigma yoga training program. So like that, we need to build. Also, we need to bring some trained people from. Uh, and continuously, you need to really upgrade, upskill, uh, take it to the next level. Um, it has to be self-sustaining model. Uh, you meaning uh, you can't suddenly leave for a few years and then suddenly expect things to really uh, get back. So it's a continuous, uh, continuously running system. Um, and uh, again, as, I, as, as we said here, now we are trying to really more and more. This is where I said what we started 10 years, 20 years, 30 years before is not what we are practicing today. Today we, we don't run a system for the sake of running. Uh, definitely in a the global environment, and even for those employees themselves, if they don't see a value, they don't see a purpose, they don't see something that they are adding value, it will, it will not sustain. So you need to link it to a, a purpose, uh, whatever improvement you want to do. Even if you do, you, you have to do a, uh, a business outcome, you, you need to really have a conviction, they have to have a conviction, uh, or where you want to take the organization to. The approach what we took, at least like, my uh, focus was, I, I told my team that this is a lifetime opportunity for all of us to take India to a next level in a global scene of in a, in a global company. So today in safety, we are number one in, in, in ZF group, some of the Indian plants. So that, that gives a pride, you know, you, you are, uh, the safety incidents are absolutely, there's no incident and uh, you are comparable to the best uh, quality, we are comparable to any best uh, uh, global sites. So you, that is the motivation because you need to always uh, give a, a purpose why they should do. Uh, purpose could be different, many many different. Maybe you are, you are you want to be a market leader or whatever. But then that is what will drive. So a purpose, a clear framework, and making sure that there is a link and everybody in the system they realize that this is this is a natural uh, you know way uh, process is as a critical. I just quickly go through, uh, move on. Move. We earlier learned from some of the uh, professor senses, uh, and uh, we created a, a Johari window which clearly defines which, which type of problem will be solved by which people. A simple, uh, uh, you know, issues can be solved by suggestion scheme. Uh, we also set a target, uh, 52 suggestions per, uh, per person per year. Essentially, they have to implement the suggestion in our system. They have to implement. Uh, but then initially again there could be repeat suggestions, all that things well and slowly we are now we are now making sure that each suggestion has a, a, a meaning, a deeper, a, you know, it's a value, it provides some value, etc. But today we are running up 32 suggestions per person per year. Suggestions which started as only for a permanent employees, when we moved into a global entity, we decided it can be for trainees as well. So trainees have to also they are also part of this. Later we extended this to the, the 
they imply your activity section to executives and leaders also. But they have to, they, they can join through the QC circle, uh, supervisory improvement teams or class functional teams and uh, very complex problem they solve it through a task force. So this is a, again it's a, it's a super creative framework. We, 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 this is largely the guideline how do we uh, you know, structure the uh, problem versus who should solve etc. But very important thing is uh, how do you recognize the people? Uh, these youngsters or uh, trainees are coming, many of them they don't get real recognition. You know, they, are, they are treated as though so they are, uh, uh, you know, they can't, they don't have, uh, they can't apply their brain the way we apply. But in reality, many of them are very, very smart. And uh, in, sometimes when we go into the details, we realize some of them are in that position because their family situation has not allowed them to get educated, etc. But they are. Uh, uh, they get, they, this is the best platform to get recognition. This this one, to these two young ladies, uh, some diploma trainees, they don't have a permanent job in the company, but they did very simple and remarkable uh, suggestion, improvement. And the global chairman of Gapco, uh, he, he, he saw them, he knew, uh, appreciate it. So this is what they are longing for. You know? These people, we have to make sure it's not that money alone that uh, all of us know that. So it's essential to put through a very very structured recognition system and uh, it's not money in most cases it's not money it's purely how you we have a town hall meeting every month and, and in that we ask the best suggestions to speak to everybody and then uh, explain what is the suggestion suggestion uh, same thing uh, QC circle member will come and uh, explain what it is what it do <coughs> we also use uh, our annual annual day in which even our customers reward our uh, the best suggestions uh, suggested for the year. <coughs> Same case, uh, uh, a QC circuit. Cross functional teams. So, certain complex problem, even we, 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 we do it, uh, we actually developed a business through a QC circuit, uh, through a cross functional team. Today we supply digital solutions, the uh, fleet management solutions to one of the Indian OEM. It started, emanated as a, a cross-functional activity between the uh, engineering teams and the marketing teams and the uh, and, and some of the young uh, uh, new graduates, postgraduates like that. You know, this is a, a topic. Again, uh, we such things even we discuss with our. Uh, Global CEO as well. we, we, we use that opportunity whenever he comes, we, we, we make sure these boys and girls they have an opportunity to interact. Similarly, the, the case, our, um, uh, we, we used to have a conduct an annual, uh, uh, annual convention, quality convention, so uh, even customer, our customer uh, and our global colleagues when they come, we take, make use of. So, you have to put in an excellent uh, uh, yes, a, a recognition mechanism within the company. Th that's also monetary thing, but then it's it's a very very minor. But the main recognition is how you actually give them the platform to to to, to meet to speak to others. So so essentially in our, in our framework, uh, to develop highly engaged employees with strong sense of purpose. We use a Tikium uh, framework, and uh, of course uh, in the interest of time, I'm just moving. But uh, I am sure many of you understand what I am what saying. It must be developed in your system, in your ecosystem, what is more relevant for you, how it will work, etc. It's not, the basic principles are the same, but then the approach could be different. We also have an annual convention. We also, we have an annual convention in which we, it's, it's more like an annual PDC. Annual PDC of the, the improvements. Um, uh, again, it's a, it's a platform in which uh, it's, a, it's a recognition platform, and it's also a platform to really bring our one of our customers to really you know uh, talk to the employees. What do they? Uh, what is the expectation of the customer, etc. But it's it's a from a TQM from TQM or a TA, it's an annual PDC. Now I'm moving to the uh, daily daily one. Right? Yes, uh, the first part of the employee engagement, how do you really build an organization in which everybody feels that they are, they are stakeholders, they are part of this 
the success story or they are a part of this major, major uh, movement is uh, one aspect. The second is uh, you need a, a strong uh, uh, daily management framework in the company. Because we want to put a strategy to put into action. Suppose we want to achieve certain, uh, uh, certain target. Let's say I want to become a 1 billion company by 2030. I need to do this week something. I need to do this today something. So unless you do that, uh, your, that, that 2030 target will not happen. So strategy is fine. Maybe the, the topic for uh, today's discussion is very clear. You see, putting the strategy into action, if you want to do, even a policy management doesn't work if you don't have a daily routine management, a robust daily routine management system. So daily routine management system in the company is extremely important. And because uh, first, uh, uh, through a strong uh, daily routine management system, you also eliminate variation in your, in your process, in your, in your business, in anything. You know, so that, that's what it is. Uh, so here, um, I talked about uh, you have to create a framework again. Uh, as, I, as I told you earlier, an operator is responsible for each each tact, every part that is produced. A line leader is responsible every hour. Again, he has to be responsible for, responsible for what, you know, again, the operator is, if you say, is responsible for quality, maybe productive, within a tact is he producing or not, maybe it could be his, 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 his focus. But then the line leader has to make sure that uh, any gap that is happening in the first hour production or the second hour production, if it is not happening, he should understand the root cause and correct it in the third hour. But that is the meaning of, you have to rotate the PDCA within the cycle, within the given cycle. So, Early, uh, then you go to a next level value system. I'm, I'm making it for production factory environment. Um, he is responsible for uh, every shift like that. For example, I, I management process, I don't take anything beyond a week. You have to manage your business every week. If you don't manage your business every week, and then uh, if you think uh, by, by the end of the month you will be able to achieve, it's not, uh, it's not feasible. At the same time, I cannot go and do every day also. So what I said, I, I, I make sure all my direct reports send a weekly report to me against a given framework. Where is our plus, where is our things which is not happening? So how do we correct it? So then you do a quick PDCA and respond to that. You know, this is again leadership level. We need to really also make sure constantly you, this is for every function. Even an engineering function has to put on a weekly basis what are their KPIs and how are they performing, what support they need. Like so, that's, that's why it's from each tact to each, uh, even at the business leader level, you need to make sure there's a clear, robust uh, a, a, a PDCA system in place. PDCA is nothing but it's a management process. Uh, that's how you manage the system. If you don't know, if you don't have a PDCA location in your system at a different level based on the cycle, cycle time, uh, you, you can assume that the, uh, you are in an unstable situation. This will bring everything to a stability. For example, now today in the shop floor, you have to have a shop floor management system. All your QCDA should be seen by the, if it is shift, the shift values to manage the level they have to have. Uh, and we used, for a, for a line leader, we used to have a, a notebook, each hour one. Today now the notebook is replaced by a real time, you can capture all the data. The OE can be tracked in real time using the digital means. So then you expect the people to quickly correct before the end of the shift. Like this, so also you need to cascade uh, uh, the, the managing point, checkpoint, the framework is again defining, uh, uh, suppose we have to achieve a market uh, market share, I have to achieve an increased market share, I have to define who will have to do that. As a, as a CEO, it's, I cannot do, it's not, even though it's overall responsible. So you assign the responsibility to maybe the marketing manager or a sales leader. He in turn has to make sure how it will be done. So, the, so at a different level, there's a break. Everywhere they have to get, try to get some idea how that will be done. It's not that everybody says it should be done, it should be done, but nobody does. But then the question is, how it will be done? Are you going to achieve through your cost leadership? Or are you going to achieve through your quality leadership? Well, what exactly is going to be your approach? So you have to create a framework of, of managing point checkpoints. My managing point becomes, my checkpoint becomes a managing point of my, my, my direct report. This is again a DPM framework in the body in a daily routine management. I am not spending much time here, uh, but then you all, everybody, all of us may be having a similar thing. Uh, you know, the, because of the position that we hold, 
it's, a, it's clearly defined how much you, what is your, you are accountable for what and your report is are accountable for what else, etc. Those things. That is the framework. <coughs> yeah. Now I am going to only spend some few minutes on the policy deployment, policy management. Policy management in simple terms is, uh, is creating a, an aligned thinking, aligned uh, activity in the company. Uh, because normally a company which is not following a TQM or a, which has got a, a different uh, way of looking at things, this will, it will be like this. But then if you have a common aligned goal, um, again a key part of the TQM framework, uh, because the, the, the division or business has to achieve certain key business goals, everybody has to shoot towards the same objective. There is a, an approach. Essentially, it, uh, you have to have a, the, uh, the annual, uh, of course in a global company you also may have an annual operating plan, which is, which is, a, which is, a, which is an operating policy plan is different from annual operating plan, because policy plan is a stretch plan over the uh, annual operating plan. So annual operating plan, if you have, then using that the, the CEO or the president, they try to give a, uh, a policy which is essentially taking three objectives very critical for the, for the business for that year and then uh, the targets are actually given more stretch as the CEO believes you know what is relevant at that time so and then both the top down and bottom up activity because it's not that the difference here is when the CEO says we need to let's say improve our margin by another two percent the teams have joined together and say it's possible, not possible, or we can do even better. That process. Then you have to have a, 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 a again a, a, a meeting, policy offsite meeting to arrive at what should be our policy targets and how it should be achieved as well. Um, so Again, he may say the market outperformance is some, some X percentage, aftermarket growth is X percentage, but then the team has to go through uh, a cross-functional, because when the, the, the CEO says there will be a few weeks uh, time frame for a cross-functional team to work and come to an upside meeting in which they will, they will share their perspective, what all we can do better, because if you don't take the advantage or the, the power of the employee engagement, you may your, your annual operating plan may be largely uh, 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 from a calculation or from a, uh, what the finance says, you just put it. But then when the, when the, when the engagement of the other people are very strong, when they are able to come out with new ideas, obviously you will be able to do much, much better than what otherwise was possible in the system. Uh, okay, these are some of the examples of my aftermarket team of what uh, some earlier year, whatever we did, I just want to. So they come out and say what all they can do, 154 pros, they can actually do much better, there are many opportunities that they, 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 they come out with. Then uh, these are all actual uh, uh, work of the team, they, they, <coughs> then they decide uh, what type of products they need to launch for the aftermarket in the year and uh, what type of other strategies they need to adopt. Because it's owned by them, uh, it's, 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 it's developed by them and it's also owned by them and then uh, it's also easy for the, for the execution. So then you, you get into an execution framework. Yeah, then uh, those things finally you decode into each project and then you write a project charter for each one of them. I, I'm in the, in the policy. Uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know how many of you are practicing, it's not that uh, it involves it, it requires so much of uh, 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 involvement and change, uh, involvement by the people. Of late, what we are realizing is, earlier when we prepared the policy management, it used to be an annual policy and then once in, a, uh, once in six months we review uh, mid-year policy, then you make a course correction. But with the changes in the, in the, the business becomes so dynamic. Every month uh, we see you know, changes in the market, so um, we are now tweaking the policy management process itself 
in, uh, uh, in our system, in, in our company, uh, much more, uh, we, are, we are bringing not once in six months, every, every week we are, we are trying to review what is more relevant, can we get new ideas, is there any new uh, input that can bring in, can we really reset the target uh, more positive, can we really like that, you know this, because six months I realized uh, is a, that is, 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 a, is, is not that uh, workable in the current uh, changes in the in the market situation. So we are now moving to more like a real time. As I said, every week so we would like to have a review of each function and understand what they think will happen, whether this is happening or not happening, what else we should do, etc. Uh, we, we are uh, we are changing, we are improving. Uh, meaning uh, we are also trying to use the digital means. Earlier it used to be. Uh, you know, policy deployment itself used to be a, uh, going for an off-site type of uh, meeting, everybody joined together. Uh, but now, it's also, it's also possible to do certain things through a, uh, online versus hybrid type of programs. All that we are now exploring and trying to be, uh, work on that. So this is what I wanted to say. Um, uh, <laughs> the one biggest learning that we have is, uh, it's not, uh, we need to constantly adapt. We need to constantly change, we need to constantly learn, we need to constantly evolve as a company. For us, an Indian company, then moved into a, as I said, a stock listed American company, then they have to move into a, now ZF, but if, only, if anything, we are only improving and becoming better and better, stronger and stronger. Which is because, the, because you, are, you learn to be, you learn to adapt to this new, uh, new ecosystem and that is my own uh, for me itself is one of the uh, you know, profound learning. Thank you. <laughs>